Hi, I'm Ryan Newsbickle, uh, author illustrator. I live here in the St. Louis area, and this is story time. Thank you for joining us. This is story time that is uh, made possible in part due to the Gateway Arch Park Foundation. Uh, a couple quick words about the Gateway Arch Park Foundation. They do a lot of the stuff that you've seen downtown that's awesome. And you may not have known that they were behind it. They are a nonprofit organization uh, that put together everything from uh, concerts for families to giant yoga classes at Keener Plaza. They are not just uh, beautifying the arch and the arch grounds, but the whole downtown area. Great organization. And uh, I am so pleased to be partnering up with them to bring you these stories as part of story time. Today, I'm reading a story that's a lot of fun. The warning, though, is this could leave you feeling a little hungry when we're done. This story I'm reading today is cloudy with a chance of toasted rav. Uh, so real quick, how many of you have seen the movie or read the book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Okay, awesome, great book. In fact, when I was a little boy, I read that book as well. And uh, I was reading that book to uh, my two daughters. They're six and four, Carrie and Jenny. And uh, I was reading that book to them. And I uh, started thinking, what would it be like instead of meatballs falling from the sky if uh, actually St. Louis food was falling from the sky? And there's a lot of St. Louis cuisine that's uh, particularly well known. Uh, and topping that list or near the top has got to be toasted ravioli. So real quick word about me. I am uh, an author illustrator. I'm originally from Georgia, but I moved to St. Louis in 2000 when I started a career as a local TV news reporter here in St. Louis. After I got out of TV, fell into uh, writing and illustrating children's books. And uh, several of the children's books that I've written and illustrated are about St. Louis or are set in St. Louis or kind of focus on St. Louis. And this one, of course, is absolutely no different. It is cloudy with a chance of toasted rap. I like to say this book is about two things that St. Louis people love to talk about, food and weather. And uh, we try to incorporate both in this book. And I hope you get a kick out of it. It was a lot of fun to put together. And it's a lot of fun to read. Cloudy with a chance of toasted rap. Rav. Now, um, this book is dedicated to the St. Louis foodie in each of us, and that, of course, includes yours truly. I have a, as I've said before, a St. Louis food problem. Is it really a problem? It can't be a problem, right? <laughs> no, it's great. Okay, I started this book with a couple of quick quotes um, here. First quote is from Mark Twain. This is true. Uh, Mark Twain said, quote, in the spring, I have counted 136 different kinds of weather inside of 24 hours. Um, what does that mean? Of course, in St. Louis, it means we get a lot of different kinds of weather real fast, don't we? Yeah. And the second quote I have is a St. Louis proverb. <laughs> St. Louis proverb. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. That's right. Okay, so... Grab an umbrella and some marinara sauce. This is cloudy with a chance of toasted rav. It's a St. Louis saying that always rings true. If you don't like the weather, wait a minute or two. <laughs> kind of goes back to that Mark Twain quote. We get a lot of weather real quick, right? If you're, if you're tired of the weather, just wait a minute because it's going to change. You name it, we get it. From mist to monsoon with fog wind, snow, and sunshine all before noon. But no St. Louis weather would ever compare to the curious storm that began raining giant golden squares. When I say giant golden squares, what am I talking about here? That's right, the toasted ravioli. And by the way, it looks like they are in a Ferris wheel here on top of a building. This is the little girl, little boy, and the dog who are the stars of this book. Um, anyone know where this Ferris wheel on top of a building could be? That's right, the city 
Museum. City Museum downtown. Awesome place. Was it raining toasted ravioli? It really was. Titanic tea rav sprinkling down from above. Each ravioli so crispy and covered with parm. When I say parm, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Parmesan cheese. That's right. So when you see sprinkles here on the toasted ravioli, that's the Parmesan cheese. Okay. Each ravioli so crispy and covered with parm landing everywhere from Old St. Charles to Grant's Farm. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't do a picture of Grant's Farm at all without including, that's right, those crazy goats at Grant's Farm. I mean, you've fed the goats at Grant's Farm, right? Milk. Like, they love the milk, but they'll also come after, you know, your shirt, your shoes, your shorts. And they're friendly. They're totally sweet. But they're hungry. And uh, so, naturally, no one is happier to see toasted ravioli falling from the sky than these goats from Grant's farm. Well, MoDOT crews plowed and put down salt to prevent slipping. A uh, real quick question. What does MoDOT stand for? MoDOT, Missouri Department of Transportation. Now, these are the guys who are out um, plowing the roads when, uh, when it snows. They're getting them cleared off so we can drive on them. They also put down salt to, uh, you know, to, for the sidewalks, things like that. So it melts the snow. Well, the MoDOT crews here, they're not plowing snow, are they? No, they're plowing toasted ravioli. In fact, they've even got a sign here that says workers and pasta ahead. You know, just to let the motorists know to, they can expect to see some giant ravioli uh, coming down the pike. All right. Well, MoDOT crews plowed and put down salt to prevent slipping. They switched to marinara sauce, which made for better dipping. Now, why would these MoDOT crews be spraying marinara sauce on toasted ravioli? Because that's what you dip the ravioli in, right? Toasted ravioli goes in that marinara sauce and then, you know, down the hatch. So good. So good. Well, and also, too, there's a, uh, there's a woman there with uh, uh, MoDOT saying, caution, spicy sauce ahead. So just, you know, again, word of advice advice, word of caution to the motorists in case there's some with maybe a little more sensitive palate. All right. And toasted ravioli wasn't all that fell from the skies. Next came pork sticks, red hot riplets, and thin crust pizza pies. Okay. It's the 4th of July. Your mom, dad, brother, sister, friends are outside barbecuing. In St. Louis, there's a really, really good chance that they are barbecuing pork sticks. Why? That's what we barbecue here in St. Louis. But if you were to go to another town, uh, like uh, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and say, um, can I get some pork steaks, please? Or can I get a pork steak sandwich? Uh, can I get a pork steak plate at a barbecue place? They're not going to know what you're talking about. That's a St. Louis thing, pork steak. So, and Red Hot Ripplets, I think you might know these. These are those Red Hot Ripplet. Those are those ridged potato chips. They're made in the St. Louis area. I believe they're made actually in Fenton, right outside St. Louis. Delicious. And then, of course, we have our thin crust pizza pie. That's St. Louis style pizza, thin crust with that delicious layer of Provel cheese on top, right? Very nice. Okay. Well, toasted ravioli wasn't all that fell from the skies. Next came pork steaks, Red Hot Ripplets, and thin crust pizza pies. And huge plates of slingers sizzled as they came down. Now, a slinger essentially is breakfast food covered with chili. So you got eggs, bacon, uh, hash browns, all that stuff. You might throw some sausage, maybe some hamburger patties in there, and then just cover it with chili. In fact, that's why uh, it's presumed that it's called a slinger, because you would take a big ladle of chili and you just sling it on top. So that's what you have. Usually you'll eat this around two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and uh, maybe after a night of when you've gone out with friends and, uh, and had a good time in St. Louis, you, you end up in maybe one of those uh, overnight diners and you have a slinger then. And then you go to bed and you sleep for about 42 hours. So uh, anyway, all right. Huge plates of slingers sizzled as they came down. 
with Chili the Cover Baseball fans from out of town. All right, so this here, the this is was kind of an interesting picture to draw. These are actually um, baseball fans from out of town. Um, they are from they are friends from up in Chicago. They are down in St. Louis. These are Chicago Cubs fans. Here's uh, the Billy Goat. Uh, there's the Cubby mascot. So they're getting uh, completely covered with chili from a crashing slinger. I must admit, I did this picture the year the Cubs won the World Series. So it made me feel good to do this. It was very cathartic and therapeutic for me. So uh, anyway, they had it coming. But we only, we only tease because we care, right? There we go. Okay, so... Chili that covered baseball fans from out of town. Then came a drenching of ranch dressing, like a storm in spring. Here they are at the Cahokia Mounds. I had to include ranch here. Why? Because in St. Louis, we dip everything in ranch. Everything. You, men you name it, we'll dip it in ranch. Pizza, chicken nuggets, chicken fingers, chicken wings, sandwiches. Yeah, we'll put some ranch on some salad every once in a while, too, but we like to dip stuff in ranch. So we use ranch in everything. That is a condiment you'll find on most tables most nights here in St. Louis. So I had to include that. Big drenching of ranch dressing like a storm in spring. Ranch on the arch. Ranch on the zoo and their new salad bar. Ranch dressing on everything including the Muni at Forest Park. Now, how many people here have seen a show at the Muni at Forest Park? Awesome place to see a show. Love the Muni. One show that you'll see uh, being performed there quite a bit is Singing in the Rain. Uh, they had to change the title here, and I'm not sure if you're able to see it or it's kind of backwards because of uh, the way that I'm uh, recording this reading. Um, but they changed it to Singing in the Ranch. And, uh, you know, Singing in the ranch. <laughs> That's right. And of course, they have a note here that was taped up on the Muni's uh, stage, and it says, No licking the stage. So remember, guys, next time you're at the Muni, if it starts raining ranch dressing, don't lick the stage. You're just going to embarrass your parents, okay? No licking the stage. All right. Well, here's the weather, man. At a TV weather map, TV crews were shocked by the precipitation that day. Their TV weather map looked like a St. Louis buffet. That's right. This TV weatherman is up there in front of the weather map, and he is holding a sign that says, help, and he's saying, gulp. And as you can see here on the weather map, we've got kind of slingers coming in around the uh, Fenton area. Chesterfield Valley area, you're seeing pork steak at this hour. Old North St. Louis is looking straight at some toasted ravioli coming its way. Um, you've got some thin crust pizza hitting St. Charles and Alton, Illinois. You're getting pelted with some ranch dressing at this hour. In fact, we've got seven to ten feet of delicious food expected. I guess the good news for kids out there is that uh, you'd be able to use a snow day on this day. Maybe we'd call it a food day. But uh, anyway. TV crews were shocked by the precipitation that day. Their TV weather map looked like a St. Louis buffet. And ballpark snacks fell on Bush Stadium. Fans cheered like it was a grand slam. And they pulled out the tarp. And the biggest plate of nachos in history made it on the Kiss Cam. Okay, you know the Kiss Cam, right? It's that camera at Bush Stadium or at Blues Games that goes around and finds two people. And... Hopefully, those two people uh, came to the uh, event together or at least like each other enough to give each other a little smooch or something for the camera. In this particular case, we're talking about a guy and his giant bowl of nachos. Now, I like nachos. I'm sure you love nachos. This guy really likes nachos. Okay. And around the World's Fair Pavilion, the Art Museum, and the Muni, Sell ice cream cones, iced tea, and bags of cotton candy. This is all the area of Forest Park where the World's Fair was, right? The 1904 World's Fair here in St. Louis. And at the World's Fair in St. Louis, these three uh, foods were actually introduced. So before the World's Fair came to St. Louis, people didn't know what ice cream cones were, cotton candy, or even iced tea. Started right here in St. Louis. So there you go. All right. 
in this one, maybe for some of the adults watching today, another blast from the past arrived, French onion soup from Famous Bar. Uh, for those of you who do not remember Famous Bar, Famous Bar, might be too young, Famous Bar is now Macy's. Macy's bought Famous Bar, but it used to be called Famous Bar. And this sounds a little peculiar, but you could go to Famous Bar and shop around. And then also, while you were shopping for clothes, you could buy a delicious bowl of French onion soup. Amazing. So we had to bring the French onion soup back. You know that. So here we go. Another blast from the past arrived. French onion soup from Famous Bar. Each wave of weather moved in along Interstate 70 and Farty Far. What did I, what did I say? A farty far? Well, how do you say it? You say, you say farty four? Or forty far? Or f no, it's farty far. I'm sorry, that's how you agree to disagree. Farty far. Okay. Oh, here's a good page. On South Grand Avenue, falafel fell like snow, along with La Pinja Bread, Tad Jean, Pad Thai, and Pho. Now, South Grand Avenue, such a cool neighborhood. There are restaurants and cultures from all around the world around that South Grand Avenue area. So you can go to basically a, a, a small area in St. Louis and sample foods from every corner of the globe, practically. So I had to include all that global cuisine here on South Grand. And a lot of muffaladas fell in Benton Park along with pretzels, like us as pretzels, eaten with mustard. And on Steinberg Rink, kids ice skated on gobs of frozen custard. <laughs> when I say frozen custard, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about Ted Drews, ladies and gentlemen. Ted Drews. Oh, so good. And I don't know about you guys. If frozen custard fell on Steinberg Ice Skating Rink in Forest Park, I... Might be ice skating around, but I'd probably be falling at every chance I get so I could eat a little bit of that uh, frozen custard, some of those giant sprinkles and giant cherries. Good stuff. Oh, it's good. It's good. I might have to try and get some frozen custard after this. I'm starting to get hungry. By the way, are you guys getting hungry? Yeah, I'm sorry, but it's, don't freak out. It's totally normal, okay? All right. So, Scotch oatmeal cookies became float trip rats. They were a sweet ride. So these are kind of maybe like dad's oatmeal cookies. So Scotch oatmeal cookies became float trip rafts. They were a sweet ride. And the biggest BLTs you ever saw fell on the city's north side. Big BLTs. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's a little restaurant by the name of Crown Candy Kitchen. Great milkshakes. Great food. And the BLTs at Crown Candy are just about this big. And of course, the crowd below here in Old North, they're holding up big signs that say, bacon, 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 bacon. We love our bacon. All right. So, St. Paul Sammy's caused river jammies for more than 20 miles. And by the way, if you don't know what a St. Paul Sammy is, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So stay tuned. Here's a tease for you. All right. St. Paul Sammy's caused river jammies for more than 20 miles. While kids skateboarded on barbecue ribs, cut St. Louis style. <laughs> I am really getting hungry. All right. And on, on the hill, a gale of antipasta began to blow with mortadella, mozzarella, pepperoncini, bellissimo. All right. I apologize for my terrible accent there. Uh, I uh, married into a Sicilian family, so it sort of is rubbing off on me a little bit. But because the hill, of course, is the Italian slash Sicilian neighborhoods, we've got all kinds of good Italian foods falling from the sky. We've got mortadella, which is kind of like pepperoni. We've got big balls of mozzarella, and we've got the pepperoncini, like with the cats on there, pepperoncini. And of course, there's a lady with a bocce ball uh, trophy and some Italian ices here. Love the hill and love that food. St. Louis City and County. Even throughout the divorce, they celebrated on gooey butter cake. I had to set, I had to mention that treat, of course. Nothing like the city and the county dancing together on a giant piece of gooey butter cake just to bring us all together, right? Can't we all come together on some gooey butter cake? I think we can, and I think we do. I think we do. All right. From a tsunami, 
of hot salami, like uh, maybe some great hot salami places like Joya's Hot Salami or Adriana's on the Hill. Those are great places with hot salami. From a tsunami of hot salami to a white haze of soulard beignets to a landslide of Friday fish fries, we saw the whole menu that day. Now, you know, uh, usually in uh, February, March, how St. Louis on Friday starts smelling amazingly like fried fish going on everywhere. That's because of all the different fish fries going on at the churches. And uh, here's one with giant fish, fried fish falling from the sky. And of course, a nice little lady from the church is looking at them saying, tartar sauce, dear? I uh, think they're going to need a little more tartar sauce. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the Friday fish fries, absolutely. While this storm kept everyone in St. Louis well fed, um, here we are at a school it's lunchtime, and they're and the kids are already doing trades. Like I'll trade you uh, hot some or uh, some toaster ravioli for some hot salami sammy. Everyone's trading good stuff here. Um, the poor lunch ladies in the back are all lonely. Sorry for those lunch ladies, but people are bringing their lunch right now because well, it's all falling from the sky. Anyway, okay. So while this storm kept everyone in St. Louis well fed, some couldn't help running to the grocery store for their milk eggs and bread. Yes, when it storms here in St. Louis, you know this, but your kids may not know this. Kids out there, listen, I'll let you in a little secret. Um, your parents might do this. Your teachers might do this. I do this. When it storms outside, uh, we run to the grocery store and we buy milk, eggs, and bread. Why? I have no idea. Uh, maybe <laughs> it's just because we like making French toast when it gets stormy outside. I don't know, but we buy the milk, eggs, and bread, and this is no different. Everyone buying that stuff up because of the storms going on. Until finally, the storm left as quickly as it had come. Creve Coeur Lake, a beautiful rainbow, letting us know the storm is over. Until finally, the storm left as quickly as it had come. A spread of food was left in its wake. It was gobbled up, every crumb, so looking at this picture, I don't know if you could tell, can you tell me what we decide to do with all this food in St. Louis? Yeah, we hold the world's largest picnic. In fact, we have a news reporter here. She's saying this just in people from all around the world are coming to St. Louis for this picnic. So uh, yeah, world's largest picnic in St. Louis. That's it's nice to see uh, that uh, I guess we had the world's largest picnic. Uh, a picnic blanket somewhere so that we could unroll for all this food. So that worked out well. So a spread of food was left in its wake, but it was gobbled up every crumb. And soon it became St. Louis legend, the toasted Rav Tempest of long ago. So um, this is the History Museum. They've got a toasted Rav Tempest exhibit. Does anyone know what Tempest means, by the way? Tempest? Tempest is kind of a fancy word for a storm. So I liked using Tempest because the tea and toasted rav and tea and Tempest kind of made it fun to say. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. So the toasted rav Tempest of long ago, it's a new exhibit. And it says that marinara sauce is included with admission. So that's a nice value deal there for anyone going to the toasted rav Tempest at the History Museum. So soon it became St. Louis legend, the toasted rav Tempest of long ago. More of a blessing than a curse. It could have been worse. At least we weren't Chicago. So what happened? The storm moved to Chicago, and what did it start dumping on all these Chicago Cubs fans? That's right, deep dish pizzas. Chicago-style pizzas are getting dumped on the Chicago Cubs fans. Those poor Cubs. I tell you what. Um, at least they're going to be eating well for a while, although it looks like maybe from some of the illustrations they've been eating well for uh, many years. But uh, anyway, it, it, more of a blessing than a curse. It could have been worse. At least we weren't Chicago. And that, my friends, is cloudy with a chance of toasted wrap. Now, I included some St. Louis trivia takeout because in St. Louis we love trivia. We have trivia nights. So there's a couple of trivia questions about St. Louis food that I want to throw at you and see if you can come up with it. All right, question number one. 
In addition to ice cream cones, cotton candy, and iced tea, what else was introduced at the 1904 World's Fair? A, the hot dog. B, the power play dance. You know that, right? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, all right. B, the power play dance. Or C, Halloween jokes, which as we've talked about on prior readings, only St. Louis kids tell Halloween jokes. And I've got a book about that that I'll tell you in a minute. Um, correct answer is A, the hot dog. The hot dog was also introduced at the 1904 World's Fair. You remember that page where we talked about St. Paul Sammy, St. Paul sandwiches? Do you know what's in the St. Paul sandwich? What is inside a St. Paul sandwich? A, leftover slinger chili. B, egg foo young. C, Sazitza brined in the tears of baseball fans from Chicago's north side. It is B, egg foo young. Egg foo young is inside a St. Paul sandwich. They're delicious. Uh, you can find them at a lot of Asian restaurants in the St. Louis area. And uh, they actually have come in varieties. They'll be like pork, St. Paul Sammy, shrimp, St. Paul Sammy. So uh, check them out. They are delicious. Okay. Red Hot Replets. We talked about those, those potato chips. Red Hot Replets are often incorporated in which of the following St. Louis dishes? They are A, sprinkled over a Provel pizza. B, layered inside a hot chicken sandwich. C, dumped on a saucy pork steak, or D, all of the above. Yes, it's D, all of the above. That's right. Any of those is permissible for Red Hot Riplets. Okay, pork steak. We know pork steak. We love pork steak. What comes from what part of the pig? What part of the pig does pork steak come from? A, the pork butt. Stop laughing. B, the snoot. C, who cares? It's fall off the fork tender and it's delicious. Or D, A, and C. The correct answer is, well, A and C. It comes from the pork butt and it is so delicious. Who cares? But that is where pork steak comes from. And then finally, number five, Provel cheese. Provel cheese is a delicious blend of what three cheeses? What three cheeses is in a delicious blend? You've got A, mozzarella, provolone, and cheddar. B, cheddar, provolone, and Swiss. C, provolone, Cotswold, and manchego. The correct answer is cheddar, provolone, and Swiss. That's what makes up Provel cheese, which is on our beloved St. Louis pizzas. And that is Cloudy with a Chance to Toast a Wrap. I sure hope you enjoyed this. Real quickly, just want to show you some of the other books I've got and say something quick, too, about the Arch Park, the Gateway Arch Park Foundation. Um, other books of mine, My Pet Arch, all about what would you do if the arch followed you home. Um, another book, I think we may be reading this one next, so let's see. Just stay tuned. Um, it's Who Moved My Gooey Butter Cake? It's a goo donut about a girl, her dog, and her missing gooey butter cake. And it was just a license for me to eat tons of gooey butter cake and call it book research. Um, the funniest Halloween joke in St. Louis, because as we've discussed, only St. Louis kids tell Halloween jokes. It's true. And this book is all about that. I've got the St. Louis Night Before Christmas, which is like the night before Christmas story, but uh, with all kinds of St. Louis references in it. You know, it's packed with it. There's... Uh, where the Easter Bunny go to high school. This one uh, just came out this spring, so it's really pretty new. And it's all about uh, this girl who has to know where the Easter Bunny went to high school. So she's gonna try and track him down to find out that important information here in St. Louis. Uh, then the St. Louis 12 Days of Christmas, because Christmas in St. Louis is just too much fun for one day, right? You gotta have 12. <laughs> and. Uh, and then one other book that you can find on my website, too. It's not necessarily about St. Louis, but it's called Pete and the Delete Button. Pete and the Delete Button. It's one that I wrote and illustrated as well. So um, how can you hear more readings? Find out uh, more about me? Well, let's talk about finding more, listening to more readings first. This, as I uh, hold it up now, I realize this is probably all backwards for you. So I'm going to read it to you backwards. Um, to find to listen to more readings, more story times, um, what you can do is follow the Gateway Arch Park 
Foundation, Gateway Arch Park. So uh, you can find them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, then uh, they will have links to these story times and um, love partnering up with them because they do nothing but great stuff for the city of St. Louis. You can also follow Ryan Newsbickle author, which of course is backwards here, but Ryan Newsbickle author you can follow as well. And uh, that's my uh, Facebook uh, author page. It will keep you up to speed with new books I have coming out, different things that are going on. And of course, readings like this one, which are uh, a lot of fun to do and completely my privilege. So I hope you've enjoyed the reading. Hope you've learned a little bit about St. Louis cuisine, which is absolutely delicious. And uh, quick show of hands, who here is a little hungry? Yeah, count me in too. I'm hungry too. I'm going to see if I can scrounge up uh, maybe some pork steak and uh, see if we can get some uh, some you know some red hot riplets going or something. That sounds pretty darn good to me too. Anyway, thank you for your support again. I'm Ryan Newsbickle, author, illustrator here in St. Louis. Also, just a dopey local dad who enjoys uh, putting together stuff that hopefully leaves you with a little bit of a smile today. Take care, and we'll see you next time on Storytime. Bye-bye.